How do you set a white balance on infrared images in Darktable? How are editing modules organized in Darktable? I'll show you. Are you interested in learning more about infrared photography? Check out my book. Details are at the end of this video. So here we are in dark table. We'll start off in light table. This is the area where you can view all of the images that you've imported. You can import images over here, put them in various collections and, and filter them based on criteria. When you select an image, you will go to dark room. So dark room is the, the portion of the program where you can actually edit a specific image. So let me pick a specific image that we can open up in the dark room portion of dark table. So the first thing that I want to do here in Darkroom is look at the different modules and how they're grouped. So over here on the right hand side of the screen, we have these tabs, these icon tabs here. The first one is the quick access panel. So for example, down here, I can see quick access to commonly used features. So if I look at exposure, I can get the ability to adjust the exposure of my image. And I can either do that with a limited set of tools here, or I can click the expand option that will take me to the full version of the module. And here I'll have all of the exposure options. So for example, if I wanted to use the automatic exposure, I could do that here in the full version of the module. So in addition to the quick access, we have showing only modules that are active. There's these little icons next to each module. You see the circle only, and these are modules that are always active so they can't be disabled as opposed to these ones that have like kind of a little power icon which can be switched on or off so for example the the ones that are always active they are things like color profiles that you always need to have a color profile so i can set my color profile whereas the modules that can be turned on and off if i click this power icon then you can see i've disabled the exposure now i've re-enabled the exposure so this view this tab will only show me modules that have been enabled Enabled. The next tab over is the technical tab. So this is where there's a whole variety of modules and you can either look for a module in this space or you can search for a module by name. Then we have the grading, which is where color and a lot of related stuff lives. And then finally we have effects. So the first thing that we want to do, of course, for infrared is to set a white balance. And I can do that either by searching for the white balance module, or if I'm in the quick access panel, I can go down to white balance. From the quick access panel, if I turn on white balance, I'm not going to have all of the features that are available. So I want to click this option to go to the full module or from anywhere I could type white, for example, and that would bring me the white balance module. And then I would have all of the settings that are available in the white balance module. So within the white balance module, the first tab that I have is as shot. So this will be the white balance that was set in camera. The next is detected from an area. So if I click this, it will set an automatic white balance based on the area. And so you can see this box is used to define what the area is. And by default, it's got most of my image. So this usually will give you a pretty good white balance within Darktable. Darktable is actually pretty good at setting a white balance automatically, even with an infrared image. Now, if you have struggles with this, you can always just readjust the size of the box. So for example, I could pick a spot in the middle of the screen where I had, in this case, where there's a lot of white and I could set my balance that way. So you could pick a specific target. If I targeted on the trees, you could see the result would be different than if I targeted on this chair, for example. You can use this to narrow the scope of the automatic balance that's set. But once you do that, dark table does a pretty good job of identifying white balance even for infrared. The third tab in the white balance panel is the user modified white balance. And this allows me to make an adjustment based on the temperature and tint slider. This gives you a lot of flexibility. One of the challenges though, is that when grabbing the slider, it can be a little bit hard to get the exact value that you want. You've got to be very careful when dragging it. So there's a couple different ways we can get around this. If I use the shift key, and hold down the shift key when sliding well you can see that the increment moves in very large numbers in many cases it makes it hard to really fine tune if you hold down the control key then moving the mouse the slider moves much less than your mouse movement so you can get really fine grain control so for example if i was to go back down close to the auto setting which was right around in this range and if i click the slider and then hold down the control key i could make very fine controls of the white balance and that could work really well. The other option that you have for modifying these sliders is to use the arrows 
on your keyboard. So for example, if I've recently adjusted the temperature or if I click on the word temperature and I use my left and right arrow keys, this will modify the setting by a single Kelvin. So you've got a lot of granular control here. If you'd like to move it in greater increments, you can hold down the shift key to move in increments of 10 Kelvin. And this would allow you to, to fine tune. So let's say for example, in this image, I liked the auto balance that was set by working on the chair that got me close, but maybe I wanna get a little bit cooler in the whites. So I could notch this down 10 at a time Kelvin and get to a color balance that I really like. And then this final tab sets a color balance based on the color space that's available as a reference point. But again, this is really only useful for visible aid images. It's not really useful for infrared. So for most cases, you're going to be working with this automatic setting, and then you'll adjust the area to actually get the white balance that you need. What are your tips for setting a good white balance in Darktable? Let us know in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about infrared photography, check out my book, Color Doesn't Exist, a practical guide to infrared photography. It's full of details for photographers at all skill levels. Now available in print and ebook editions. Check it out at infraredbook.com. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, like, subscribe, or comment. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.